I think that's okay. I've put most of the things in. And so I'm just going to practice before Ian gets here. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. A final word, if I might, if I may be permitted, if I might be permitted. Pocket. Do you want to turn it on? Is it on already? It's You've wired me up. You may as well. Um. <laughs> Sunday Kant's Trinity is dedicated to a man called Lionel Matthews, whom I never knew, but whom my father referred to whenever I spoke about Sunday Kant. Lionel Matthews was um, an Australian army officer who had been planning an escape from Santa Khan prison camp and the, some elements of that were discovered. He was tortured and he never revealed the full extent of the plan to escape. By so doing, he saved everyone's lives. So the last, um, and I can't play it, the orchestra isn't here yet. <laughs> I'll read you the poem that is the last one. I think it's a rather beautiful poem. Yes, but my, the killer line for me is this middle one. Um, you know, and it's so evocative of the places I've been in Australia. Sleep, who are silence, make me a hollow stone filled with white blowing ash and wind and darkness. Now you're recording all of this banality, are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now off to the Queen's Hall for the second last and it makes me a wreck because I'm listening for um, mobile phones and hearing aids the whole time. If an audience is really still, that's the best um, feeling to have. Yeah. And our, I mean, our audiences are amazing and the, the feedback we get from artists is really good. There we are. Hilarious. And I'm sitting down. Yeah, I guess so. Doing what I normally do in rehearsals? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the lady who is the percussionist, she was telling me that her father and her grandfather um, had, you know, similar experiences oh, really? in, 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 in Asia. So it was very meaningful for her. But the last movement is very particularly for... Um, my father, because it's not, I mean, it's consistent in style with the other movements, but it is probably the most tonal and lush and lyrical. It was a way of sharing my own experiences very intimately with audiences in Edinburgh. What we really need is a banana lounge <laughs> placed <laughs> amongst the... Well, it's not the most ridiculous thing you've ever got me to do. <laughs> All right. All right, good. Inspired by the generosity and warmth of your welcome, expressed through an event founded for the very best of reasons at the very worst of times, and encouraged by a request made on your behalf from this platform in 1947 by Sir John Faulkner, urging us all to embrace the world. You would have accepted that someone or some society or some community was going to retreat into itself and lick its wounds. And John Faulkner would have none of that. He said this had to be a festival to embrace the world. And what I would like to think that that meant was that not embracing the world that you were comfortable with, not embracing the world that you were familiar with, not embracing your part of the world, much, much more daring and much broader than that. The world. All of it. And if that's true, and if that's what he meant, it means that this festival has to continue to grow and develop and view the world as it is, not as we would like it to be. And I think that in making that statement, he was saying something quite radical. Simple, but radical. And that's what makes this festival work. 
I don't read the reviews. I just read. I love this. I, I the love. Quotes. The, no, it's not. I like the quotes, but I love the. Um, I love the sort of just the summaries. I just love knowing what's been reviewed. Yeah. I'm not bunging this on just for the sake of it. This is a. <laughs> this is the only authentic conversation I'm having this morning. <laughs> Are you still there? I got a call. Then said something like, you know, um, Sir Brian McMaster is retiring from the Edinburgh Festival. I'd, I'd done a bit of research, but I wanted to make sure that I was proposing things that were not the same as, but a, continu a continuity from, but not the same as um, what had gone bef before. I mean, no one was more surprised about this gig than me, I promise you that. And it was actually my father who, who at that stage, let me work it out, what are we talking, 2006, was almost 96. Yes. It's not he same. said in his very typical way, he said, marvellous, um, and I guess that means we'll see less of you. And that's good and sad, and that's all he said. It's become the job that I've enormously enjoyed, you know, and a fantastic opportunity. But it wasn't one that I, th I seriously thought I would ever do or I didn't seek. So it has the added pleasure of being a total surprise. Are we not, after all, as Prospero observes in Act 4 of The Tempest, such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep. So before I go home to bed, I offer my gratitude to you all for allowing me to share this intense inch of time with you. To borrow Douglas Adams' title for the fourth volume in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so long and thanks for all the fish. the whole scope of it and scale of it, that's when it hit me. It was my father's, that, that comment of my father's. I never told that to anyone. My mother was all sort of gushy and hilarious, as she usually is. But my father was, um, he thought, he was very pleased, um, and he was very um, clear. And what he was really saying to me was, um, he was saying, stay in touch and goodbye.